Greetings, I'm Carl, and I want to talk today about stimulus and response, and particularly sort of the dance we do with those two when it comes to spending money. Now here's the dilemma that we've got to sort of clear up first. Almost everything you'll read in the personal finance literature, sort of advice, focuses on controlling either the stimulus or the response. Often it's the response, but it's also sometimes the stimulus. And that control looks like this. On the stimulus side, it could be, right, get off Instagram. Stop logging into Facebook and seeing what your friends are buying. Get rid of all your non-frugal friends, right? Like only have frugal friends. Disown family members that are crazy with money, right? That's sort of the focus on the stimulus. The focus on the response shows up in things like cut up your credit card, right? Use only cash. Review every transaction all the time and beat yourself up over it, right? So that, that's sort of the focus on the response. Now the dilemma with that is, and I'm not suggesting that either one of those are bad, I'm just suggesting that number one, it's, I would say it's impossible to control the stimulus. Right? Unless you're going to lock yourself up in a cave somewhere, it's not possible to control the stimulus. The response, controlling the response, to me, focusing on controlling the response, just, and if you're doing it in the way that it's normally done, which is you want to only use cash because it makes spending money more painful. But that doesn't sound like fun. It doesn't sound like a good way to live either. And if it works for you, Great, I'm not saying that it doesn't work. I'm just saying, look, it's because its focus is on pain, it often leads to blame and shame. Focusing on the response leads to shame. Because what we end up doing is saying, gosh, I knew I shouldn't have done that. I promised myself I wouldn't do that. I'm so dumb, I'm so bad. That's shame speaking. Now, I'm not suggesting we shouldn't take responsibility. I'm just saying there's a difference between taking responsibility and shame. And I think focusing on controlling our response to things without any other change in the equation, focusing on controlling our response to things creates shame. And that's not good. In fact, it doesn't help at all. The research is clear about that. Now, what ends up happening is you just sort of get this cycle, right? It becomes this habitual cycle. That there's a stimulus, boom, we respond. The respond leads to shame or blame or feeling bad. That's a new stimulus, boom, we respond. And there's no, there's no sort of space between. Now, of course, there is another option. And the other option was outlined, couldn't be more beautifully said than the way Viktor Frankl said it. Between, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response, right? So maybe, I'm just sort of humbly suggesting that maybe instead of focusing on the stimulus and the response, or maybe while we're focusing on the stimulus and the response, we start to do something like this. And I'm just going to draw an S and an R, and we start to focus on using that space, right, on using that space. And the way that would show up is just by creating a little habits, and they can be easy. They could be something as simple as just pausing, noticing the stimulus. Gosh, I really want to go buy that new pair of $100 pants or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. You see a friend wearing pants, and you want to go buy a pair. Right? Just notice it. Oh, that's interesting and just creating a little space before you do it. One area that's super obvious to me is buying books on Amazon. I think this example, I've used it before. Right? You, you, you hear something about a great book. It could be something as simple as a tweet where somebody says, love this book, and there's a link to Amazon. You hear something, you click the link, you buy the book, and because Amazon Prime and one-click shopping, like, it's, it's done in a matter of 10 seconds. Two days later, or quicker, the book shows up, and interestingly, you're like, oh, I, yeah, I want to read that book. You put it on the shelf, and then you end up with a huge stack like the one I've got a picture of here at my office. Right? So the way that could look differently is just simply saying, create a list in Amazon, which I've done, and the list is called the 72-hour rule. And every 
time I want to buy a book, it goes into the 72-hour bucket, creating space. It's fascinating to look at how big that bucket is, right? How many books are in there that I've never actually bought? Just with the benefit of 72 hours of space between the stimulus and my response, it turns out the response changed. Right? The response changed. And so while we focus on creating, and one more suggestion with responses, all that idea of using cash or credit card or whatever, it's great if its purpose is instead of trying to create shame or blame or pain, its purpose is to give you more space. Right? And, and that, that could be a huge benefit of using cash. It's a little bit more, it's, it's a little bit less convenient and therefore creates space. But what I'm suggesting is if we get really good at creating the space, if we get really good at creating the space, who cares how you paid for it? Right? The response will be appropriate because you've created the space. That's what I'm suggesting we do in terms of that dance. There's a third alternative and the alternative is focusing on that space.